So in this problem, we have a smokestack depositing soot on the ground with a concentration inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the stack. Um, and so we've got two smokestacks, which are 20 miles apart. And we're trying to find where the concentration S is a minimum. Therefore, we need to be able to take the derivative of S. So I first made a substitution that k1 is equal to 7k2. And then now I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. Now s is a function of the variable x, and k is a constant coefficient. So all I have to do is worry about the derivatives of the x's. So I took the derivative of the first term there. Now in this second term, I need to apply the chain rule because the derivative of 20 minus x all to the negative 2 is negative 2 times 20 minus x to the negative 3 times the derivative of what was inside, which was negative 1. Now I'm going to do a little bit of simplification, and I'm going to rewrite my negative exponents as positive exponents. And here, negative 2 times 1, the negatives cancel out. So I've got 2k plus 2 over 20 minus x, quantity cubed. And now I'm going to get myself a common denominator. So that way I'm able to add my two fractions. So in the numerator I have negative 14k sub 2 times 20 minus x quantity cubed plus 2k sub 2 times x cubed. And all of that stuff is over x cubed times 20 minus x quantity cubed. Now, we're going to set this equal to 0 in order to optimize it. And this is going to be true for when the numerator is equal to 0. If the denominator is equal to 0, then our value for our slope would be undefined. Zero. So let's go ahead and set the numerator equal to zero. And so I can factor out a k sub two. And then at this point, I recognize that if I was to go through the simplification algebraically, speaking of this statement right here, that things aren't going to drop out and it's not going to become much more simplified um, in order for me to be able to figure out the value of x. So at this juncture, I'm going to um, go ahead and use my graphing calculator um, to be able to figure this out. So let's go ahead and enter our derivative function, the second part of the derivative function. Since we don't need to worry about k, because k is a constant, a non-zero constant. So I've got negative 14 times 20 minus x quantity cubed. Plus 2x cubed. And our goal is to figure out where this is equal to 0. So in other words, we're going to find our x-intercepts. So I'm going to zoom fit. And then I'm going to tweak our window slightly because in this case, we have way too much stuff below the x-axis that we don't need. And we don't quite see our x-intercept. So I'm going to change my x-minimum to 0 and my x-maximum to, well, I'll say 50. That should capture it pretty well. My y-minimum is way too much, so I'm going to do, say, negative 20 to... Oh, positive 20. Let's see if we capture our x-intercept. So okay, there it is, right there. That's what we're looking for. And so I'm going to go second to trace. And I'm going to go down to 0 to find your x-intercept. And I know that this x-intercept is somewhere between 0 and 50, since that was my lower and upper limits. So I type 0 for my left bound and 50 for my right bound. And I'd like it to guess, and there's only one thing here. 
here, so it'll automatically go to it. So our x-intercept is located at 13.134. So this is the value of x, um, which would minimize our concentration. And so I'm going to store that in my calculator for later in case if I need to use it for my testing. So we've got two options for our testing here. I can either test the first derivative um, and take a look on either side of 13.1 and see what's happening with my first derivative. So if I plug in, let's say I chose x is equal to 1 and plugged it into my first derivative, it would end up being negative. And then I plug it, say, 14, and I'd get a positive, which means my slope went from being a negative slope to a positive slope, which meant Uh, the other option is we could do a second derivative test to be able to look at the concavity of the curve. So f double prime is going to be negative 14 times k sub 2 times negative 3 x to the negative 4. plus uh, 2 times k sub 2, in this case I haven't factored it out, times negative 3 times 20 minus x raised to the negative 4th power times the derivative of what's inside, which would be negative 1. And I'll factor out k sub 2, which leaves me with to the fourth and the bottom there, and a 6 over 20 minus x to the, to the fourth power there. And my numerator in my first record is going to be 42. So if I go ahead and plug in 13.1 into my second derivative, it says that we find out that that value is greater than 0, which means my function was concave up. And if my original function is concave up, the critical point there is going to be a minimum. Therefore, we see 